Yunus, case number IT0373I, the prosecutor versus Ivan Chermak and Mladen Matat. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, Mr. Chermak, I want to make sure before we proceed that you can follow the proceedings in a language that you can understand. In other words, that you are receiving interpretation in your own language. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, I am. Thank you. And Mr. Markach, uh, same question to you. I want to make sure that you are receiving interpretation in a language that you can understand. Da. Yes, uh, I am receiving the interpretation. Thank you and good afternoon to you both. Uh, appearances for the prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, may it please the court, uh, Kenneth Scott, senior trial attorney, appearing on behalf of the prosecutor, who I'm happy to have with me today, Madam Carla Daponte. Also uh, present with the prosecution is Ms. Lori Satorio and our case manager, uh, Diane Bowles. Thank you. I thank you and good afternoon to you. Appearances uh, for Mr. Chermak. Good day, Your Honor. My name is Cedo Prodanovic. I'm from Zagreb and I represent Ivan Chermak. I thank you and good afternoon to you. Appearances for Mr. Markac. Good day, Your Honor. I represent Mr. Markovic. My name is Miroslav Sheparovic, and I'm assisted by uh, Mr. Mikulic from Zagreb. I thank you, and good afternoon to you, too. I want to make sure that, Mr. Sheparovic, uh, that you have uh, been uh, given the consent uh, by the uh, Registrar to represent your client because I am informed that for the time being such consent is forthcoming only with regard to the co-counsel, Mr. Mikulicic. Uh, can I have this uh, confirmed by you, Mr. Sepavovic? Otherwise, I will have to request you to uh, leave the courtroom and stay uh, in the gallery and follow the proceedings from there. Yes. Your Honor, the administrative difficulties have been dealt with, and I may be present at this hearing. But who, who gave you permission to be present at this hearing? Uh, the Registry, Your Honor. Um, uh, Mr. Registrar, uh, could you please confirm this uh, to me, because I was given uh, other information before I started the sitting, the hearing. Okay. We will now proceed with the initial appearance of the uh, accused, Ivan Charmak and Mladen Markac, pursuant to Rule 62 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence. Uh, before we do so, uh, let me uh, give a very short outline of the history of this case. Very briefly, uh, the indictment against uh, Ivan Chermak and Mladen Markac was confirmed by Judge Parker, a permanent judge of this tribunal in Trial Chamber 2, on the 24th of uh, February of this year. On the same date, uh, Judge Parker issued first a decision on review of the indictment and order for non-disclosure, and secondly, an ex parte and under seal warrant of arrest and order for surrender of the two accused. Subsequently, on the 8th of March, my colleague Judge Parker issued an order lifting the seal uh, of the indictment. He issued also the decision on review of the indict the uh, lifting the seal or on, on the decision of the review of the indictment and order for non-disclosure and on the warrants of arrest. And by order of the President of this Tribunal, uh, the following day, that is on the 9th of March 2004, 
Uh, this case, that is the case against Ivan Chermak and Mlade Markac, was assigned to uh, my trial chamber, that is trial chamber 2. Ivan Chermak and Mladen Markac were transferred to the detention unit of, the, uh, of this international tribunal uh, yesterday, that is Thursday, 11th March 2004. Uh, Mr. Chermak and Mr. Markac, in a few minutes' time, I will be giving you the opportunity to enter uh, your pleas to each of the counts uh, contained in the indictment uh, of the 19th February 2004. Before I proceed any further, however, uh, I will be asking you a few questions. And before I ask you the questions, I would like to remind you that you also have a uh, right to remain silent, that is not to answer any of these questions that I am going to put to you. Uh, Mr. Chermak, could I ask you to stand up, please? Again, I want to confirm first and foremost that you are following the proceedings in your own language. Yes, I'm following the proceedings. Uh, everything is fine. Can I please have your full name and surname? Ivan Cermak. Ivan Cermak. Do you have any nicknames by which uh, you are known or, refer or referred to? No, I don't. They call me Cermak, on the whole. When were you born? Your date of birth? The wettest of... On the 19th of December, 1949. And uh, where were you born? Your place of birth? Zagreb. I was born in Zagreb, in the Republic of Croatia. Uh, what is the address at which you resided last before you were arrested? or before you turned yourself in? Zagreb, Pantovchak. Zagreb, Pantovchak, 174. I have another address. It's Dvorac Sklokove in Kravinske Toplice. Uh, I am now going to inquire from you whether your family uh, are informed about your arrest. Yes, my family has been informed, and they are aware of the fact that I surrendered voluntarily. Are they also aware that you are present here in The Hague? Yes, they are. I have told that I'm satisfied with everything and that the personnel uh, in the detention unit is extremely courteous. Would you like uh, the uh, tribunal to notify anyone else uh, from your family about uh, your transfer here? It's not necessary. Everyone knows that I'm here. You may sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Markac. Again, we are going to go through the whole uh, process uh, with you this time. Uh, I want to make sure that you are following what I am saying in a language uh, that you understand. Da. Yes, I am. So let's proceed with uh, you giving us your full name and surname. Yes, I'm General. I'm a Colonel General. My name is Mladen Markac. Uh, any nicknames by which you are referred to or known? No. No. And uh, when were you born? Roger Sam Osmok. I was born on the 8th of May, 1955, in Djurjevac, in the Republic of Croatia. And could we have uh, your last address uh, immediately prior to your uh, being arrested or prior to your surrender? Tuchadova, 
Bhutanova, number three, in Zagreb. Uh, are the members of your family uh, informed about your arrest and also about your presence, transfer and presence here in The Hague? Yes. Yes, they are. And they are aware of the fact that I uh, voluntarily surrendered to the tribunal. Is there any other member of your family that you would like us uh, to inform? It's not necessary. Everyone has been informed. Thank you. And now a question to both of you. Uh, are you aware if uh, your embassy, the embassy of Croatia here in The Hague, has uh, been made aware of uh, your presence here in The Hague and about these proceedings? Yes, Mr. That, that was yesterday. Yes, they have been informed, and uh, they are present uh, at the hearing. Uh, they are in the public uh, gallery. Uh, yes, they have been informed. Thank you. Now, as uh, accused before this tribunal, you enjoy certain rights. Uh, these rights are uh, spelled out mainly in two articles of our statute, but then there are other rights as well to which I will be referring, uh, which we come across in the rules of evidence and procedure that have uh, been created by this tribunal. I will uh, first uh, deal with the uh, rights that are enshrined in our statute, and I will ask the registrar to read uh, out the passages uh, from the statute of the tribunal that you that provide you with certain uh, number of uh, rights. I'm referring specifically to articles 20 and 21 of the statute. Uh, following that, we will uh, proceed uh, with the most important. Uh, uh, formal part of uh, the initial appearance uh, and that has to do with the indictment itself. Yes, Mr. Registrar, could you please read out aloud Articles 20 and 21 of our statute? Yes. Article 20. Commencement and conduct of trial proceedings. The trial chambers shall ensure that the trial is fair and expeditious and that proceedings are conducted in accordance with the rules of procedure and evidence, with full respect for the rights of the accused and due regard for the protection of vict victims and witnesses. A person against whom an indictment has been confirmed shall, pursuant to an order or, or an arrest warrant of the International Tribunal, be taken into custody, immediately informed of the charges against him and transferred to the International Tribunal. The trial chamber shall read the indictment, satisfy itself that the rights of the accused are respected, confirm that the accused understands the indictment and instruct the accused to enter a plea. The trial chamber shall then set the date for trial. The hearings shall be public unless the trial chamber decides to close the proceedings in accordance with its rules of procedure and evidence. Article 21. Rights of the accused. All persons shall be equal before the International Tribunal. In the determination of charges against him, the accused shall be entitled to a fair and public hearing, subject to Article 22 of the statute. The accused shall be presumed innocent until proved guilty, according to the provisions of the present statute. In the determination of any charge against the accused pursuant to the present statute, the accused shall be entitled to the following minimum guarantees in full equality. A. To be informed promptly and in detail in a language which he understands of the nature and cause of the charge against him. B. To have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his defense and to communicate with counsel of his own choosing. C. To be tried 
without undue delay. D. To be tried in his presence and to defend himself in person or through legal assistance of his own choosing. To be informed if he does not have legal assistance of this right and to have legal assistance assigned to him in any case where the interests of justice so require and without payment by him in any such case if he does not have sufficient means to pay for it. E. To examine or have examined the witnesses against him and to obtain the attendance and examinations of witnesses on his behalf under the same conditions as witnesses against him. F. To have the free assistance of an interpreter if he cannot understand or speak the language used in the international tribunal. G. Not to be compelled to testify against himself or to confess guilt. Thank you, Registrar. And uh, this leads us uh, straight uh, to the indictment. <coughs> By now, you should have uh, been served with uh, the indictment uh, in your own language. I want to make sure, first and foremost, that this is so, that I am correct. Uh, Mr. Chermak. Yes, you're quite right. We have been provided with a, a version of the indictment uh, in our own language. Uh, while while uh, we are at that, um, can you assure me that you have understood its contents? I have understood the contents of the indictment. Colonel uh, Markac, same question to you. Have you received the indictment? And if yes, have you read it and understood it? I have received the indictment. I have uh, examined it and I have understood it. I have asked you these questions because uh, the next step uh, which is uh, perhaps the most important uh, part of today's proceedings, it will require me to ask of you what kind of plea you want to enter to the charges uh, that have been brought against you. Um, uh, in fact, in accordance with uh, our Rule 62, Upon uh, transfer uh, to this tribunal uh, and uh, in the course of the uh, initial appearance, I have uh, certain duties uh, to carry out. Uh, one of these is uh, either to read out or have read to you uh, the indictment, unless you exempt the trial chamber from reading it out and uh, to satisfy myself that you have understood uh, the indictment and uh, I also am bound by Rule 62 to inform you that within 30 days of the initial appearance which is taking place today uh, you will be called upon to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty on each count. Uh, this does not mean, however, that we will all have to wait uh, 30 days because the practice is that in the course of the initial uh, appearance, the presiding judge will direct the question uh, to the accused. In other words, today I may ask you if you are prepared to enter a plea. The understanding is that you are, if you are not prepared to un enter your plea today, then you have 30 days maximum within which you could enter the plea. I am informed, but I want uh, to confirm this through your counsel and also through you personally, that you do not wish that we read out in its entirety the indictment. 
In other words, that you are exempting the trial chamber from reading the indict indictment. Uh, is that so? Stay with uh, counsel for Mr. Chermak. Your Honor, the accused Ibn Chermak is aware of his right and he is waiving his right to have the indictment read out to him. He has understood the indictment and he will enter a plea on each count uh, without having the indictment read out. Do you confirm that, Mr. Chermak? Your Honor, I do confirm that. It is not necessary to have the indictment read out. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Sepatsovich or Mr. Mikulicic? Your Honor, as far as General Chermak is concerned, the situation is identical. It is not... Markach, I apologize. Uh, it's not necessary to have the indictment read out. General Markach, do you confirm that? Trust me, sir. Your Honor, I agree with uh, what my attorney has just stated. Now, I told you a few minutes ago that uh, I will be proceeding uh, asking you um, very soon what you want to, if you want to plead today and what you want to plead, uh, how you want to plead to the charges that have been uh, brought against you. I want to make sure, however, before I proceed uh, to do this, that you have had the opportunity to discuss with your lawyers about this and that you have uh, their advice. Um, uh, Mr. Chermak, have you discussed uh, this matter with your counsel and uh, are you prepared to enter a plea today? Your Honor, I have uh, examined the indictment with uh, my counsel uh, and I am prepared to enter a plea today. I I thank you. Thank you for you. Uh, and uh, General Chermak, same question. Uh, sorry, General Markac. Now I have fallen the same mistake that uh, your your lawyer did. Um, uh, General Markac, uh, have you had an opportunity to discuss this matter with your counsel? And uh, if so, are you prepared to enter a plea today? Trust. Your Honor, I have examined the indictment with my counsel and I'm prepared to enter a plea, a plea today. Right. So I address counsel now. Uh, are there any problems that you are aware of which uh, would suggest that the trial chamber does not uh, proceed with asking uh, your client, your respective clients to enter a plea uh, today? Trust Your Honor, there are no objections uh, to continuing with the hearing today. Counsel for General Markac. Your Honor, as far as General Markac is concerned, the situation is identical. Uh, there are no obstacles. I thank you. So in view of uh, the waiver, uh, that you have confirmed uh, the whole indictment will not be read out in these proceedings. What will happen is that I will uh, just read out to you uh, the charges contained in the indictment of the prosecutor of the 19th of February 2004. And after each count, I will be asking you separately how do you if you, how do you wish to plead to that particular charge? You have these options. You can plead guilty, you can plead not guilty, or you can decide uh, to remain silent. If you, should you remain silent, then uh, the trial chamber has to provide in, uh, in, in accordance with what uh, we have in our rules. But I don't envisage that that problem is going to arise today. And. Uh, uh, I will uh, start with uh, the first account that is common uh, to uh, both of you. 
the first count against a U boat is of criminal responsibility of a crime against humanity consisting in persecutions on political, racial and religious grounds being a crime against humanity punishable under Article 5H and Articles 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Mr. Chermak, how do you plead for this charge? Guilty or not guilty? N not guilty. I thank you. Mr. Markac, how do you plead to this first charge? Guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, Your Honor, I'm not guilty. I thank you. A registrar, uh, for the record, both accused have pleaded not guilty to the first count. <laughs>